Hi everybody, welcome to a new week. Welcome to another weekend recap. Our new feature we started last week where we, as the name says, recap the weekend. It's pantheralert.com weekend recap. And I think I said it last week that I was absolutely cherry picking when I started this weekend recap to do it right at the beginning of June to start doing these uh, weekly video recaps um, right at the beginning of June because there's inevitably going to be a ton of stuff going on and like I knew what it was going to be and it certainly has turned into it I mean you can see the headlines down here along the side the five things we're going to talk about today from the weekend but there was never any mystery that this was going to be a pretty good feature to start running every Monday morning in the month of June we'll see what it's like when it gets to July when things slow down a little bit but for right now, and certainly once we get into the season, I think these weekly recaps will be a lot of fun to do. Um, and right now, it's definitely the time to do it. So if you're checking this out, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's youtube.com slash pantheralaircom. Subscribe to the pantheralair.com YouTube channel. Like this video. That, that helps us out. You know what I mean? The more likes the video gets, the you know higher YouTube's algorithm raises it. The more subscribers we get to the YouTube channel, same thing. It shows up to more pit fans who want to find out what's going on. So help us out. Share the video. Like the video. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. And if you subscribe, you'll never miss any of these videos when we release them. And, and look, we're pumping out some new video content. We've got the weekly recap every Monday morning. We're going to have a new conversation podcast every Friday that we do, a, a video conversation. Our first one two weeks ago was with Nellie Cummings, pit basketball guard transfer who's coming in from Colgate. And that was a great conversation with Nellie about what he can bring to the basketball program, um, the differences in transferring now versus five years ago, which I thought was some of the most interesting stuff he talked about, uh, how he's going to fit in with the other guards on this team, why this team should be more successful than pit teams in the past. I thought it was a great conversation with Nellie Cummings. I hope you got a chance to check that out. It's still living on our YouTube channel, on the PantherLawyer.com YouTube channel, so you can go check it out, and I highly recommend that you do. And then this past week on Friday, I, I thought it was even more interesting. We had a 25-minute conversation with Jason Capel. Now, you tell me, when was the last time you heard from Jason Capel publicly? I know that I interviewed him right after he got hired. I sat in his office and, and we talked about coming to Pitt, why he's at Pitt, and, and all these different things. I don't know. I mean, I know I haven't interviewed him in the four years since then. I don't know if anyone else has either, but we did on Friday. Like I said, it was a 25-minute conversation. The video's right there, again, on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash pantherlarcom. And I, I can't recommend that enough. I, I think Jason was really interesting. Um, I think the conversation with him was something that a lot of Pitt fans have enjoyed hearing. He's a voice that you don't hear from very often in the basketball program, and there's a chance to really hear from him, um, and, and I thought it was good. And, and we covered a lot of ground. We talked about recruiting. We talked about transfers. We talked about the makeup of the current program. We talked about Nellie Cummings. We talked about John Hughley uh, and how he sort of acted as a, or took on the role. <laughs> he, he chose to take on the role. He anointed himself the GM of the team uh, this offseason, and I think it was just, it was a really good conversation. Jason had a lot of interesting things to say. So I highly recommend that you check that out. And, and I think you're going to like, we already have another conversation video podcast ready for this Friday. And I think you're going to really enjoy it. it it's one that I, I know I really enjoyed doing. I think it was a lot of fun. And I think you're going to think it's a lot of fun too. And you get a chance to check it out. So you don't want to miss that. And of course, our weekly show that we do every Wednesday night at 830. You don't want to miss any of these things. So subscribe to our YouTube channel and you will you'll know when we go live with these things when we release a new video like this weekend re this weekend recap here on Monday mornings conversation podcast on Fridays or when we go live for the live Panther Lair show on Wednesday night you will know if you're subscribed to our YouTube channel now this past weekend was so busy and there were so many things going on predictably but there were so many things going on we almost did live shows I mean, we could have done a live show Friday night. We could have done a live show Saturday night. We could have done a live show Sunday night. I mean, we could have done three live shows and had new, fresh content to talk about because it was just that kind of weekend. And again, if you're watching the video, I mean, you see the headlines down the side. And I'm not just being funny because the big storylines this weekend were they pick out a new commitment and another and another and another and another and another. And then Pitt Basketball got a commitment. And then on Sunday, they had the first prospect camp Pat Narduzzi had his first prospect camp of the year down in the south side. It was a busy weekend. These are the kind of weekends 
if you write for a recruiting website, these are the kind of weekends you, you live for. The, this is when it's a lot of fun. There's a lot of stuff to write about. There are a lot of guys to track down. There are a lot of stories to uncover. And you have a good time with it. Uh, this is this is when it's fun. And I think if you're a Pitt fan, if you follow these sites, if you follow recruiting, this is when it's a good time. So let's jump into it. Six new commitments for Pat Narduzzi this weekend. Took the com- number of recruits committed in the class from two to eight. That's quite a jump. Recruiting class jumped from ranked like number in, somewhere in the 70s nationally up into the 20s. That's a real jump. And that's the kind of thing that happens when you land a bunch of guys. Let's run them down. First one, as far as I can tell. Now, these things all kind of happen in quick succession. We're not entirely sure who was here, who was there, which guy recruited when, which guy committed here, which guy committed then. But I'm pretty sure Shadarian Harrison was the first commitment on Friday night. I, I'm pretty sure he was the first one. He's a cornerback safety prospect from the Tampa area, a little more inland. Not really, you wouldn't call him Gulf Coast, but he's like less than an hour away from Tampa, headed east uh, in Lakeland, Florida. Uh, he's a cornerback safety. He's about 6'1", but he's got a wingspan that he claims is 6'9". I don't know if I buy that it's 6'9". It's probably... But, but I've heard it's, it's, it's a significant wingspan. It's like 6'6". Six, six. All right, so he's got a wingspan that's 6'6". Six, six. He can run like the wind. He's got offers from Colorado, Illinois, Iowa State, Louisville, Nebraska, Oregon State, Tennessee, Vanderbilt, West Virginia, out of the Power 5 ranks. He had other official visits he was looking to take. He saw enough in his pit visit that he was canceling those. He committed to the Panthers. And I think, you know... Our good friend Harry Paceris said, you know, don't call him a sleeper. He's not a sleeper. He's got 20 offers. And Harry's absolutely right. I think he was a little bit under the radar as far as recruits go. And and he's sort of a classic Florida recruit. The classic kind of guy that Pitt gets out of Florida and can get out of Florida. And the classic kind of guy that has drawn Pitt back to Florida year after year after year. A guy who does have a ton of offers. And yet somehow he is still kind of under the radar because he's in Florida where there's just so many guys. There's so many four-star and five-star prospects. There's so many high-end recruits and great athletes that you can almost miss a guy who's got 20 offers. You can almost miss a guy who's got, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten power five offers. You can almost miss a guy who's a six one corner with a six six wingspan or six seven wingspan. You can almost sort of miss a guy just because there's so much talent there. These are the kinds of guys that Pitt goes back to Florida to get. And these are the kind of guys that, you know, make a lot of teams. A lot of schools go to Florida if you have the connections to find a guy like this. Harrison can play corner. He could also move to free safety. And this is something that we'll probably say about a couple of the guys, three of them really, out of the commitments that they got this weekend. They're corners who could also slide to the field safety position. And we've seen this transition happen a couple of times. Eric Hallett was a corner. DeMar Hamlin played corner. Um... We've seen guys move, for, uh, Khalil Anderson, this spring, moved from corner to safety. It's a transition the coaches are comfortable with making, particularly to the field safety position, uh, to move a, a corner back there. And so Harrison could make that move ultimately. So people might look at it and say, well, they took three cornerbacks this weekend? Is that just end their defensive back recruiting? Well, no, because some of these guys could be a corner, could be a safety. And you just you take them under the umbrella of defensive back, and then you're able to. I mean, you can. You don't work with. You know, we need two corners and two safeties in this class. We need four DBs, and I'm not sure if four is the number they're shooting for. But you understand what I'm saying that you can kind of put them all under the umbrella. You don't get so restrained by the numbers that you end up turning guys away that you really like because you still take them because, well, let's you we'll start you all at corner. And we'll see, you know, which guys might make a move to safety or might make more sense as a safety. So Shadarian Harrison, I, I think a really big pickup. The other two DBs, let's go to the number two on our list here, and another and another. We'll go to the other two defensive backs. And they're both out of Georgia, Bryce Pollock and uh, Shelton Lewis. And, um, yeah, they're both out of Georgia. For some reason, I... Uh, I had it written down wrong on my sheet. Shelton Lewis, um, another defensive back, another corner who could potentially move to safety. The pit coaches have told him they like him as a corner. He wants to play corner, so that's kind of his spot. He had offers from Arkansas, Boston College, Duke, Georgia Tech, Indiana, Louisville, North Carolina, NC State, Purdue, and Vanderbilt. Again, another Power 5 offer list. 
you know, as part of a 20 offer sheet for Shelton Lewis. And you're looking at schools that either A, you would like to think that Pitt will beat consistently year in, year out, Boston College, Duke, Georgia Tech, Indiana. You want to you want to think that Pitt wins eight out of ten in those battles if they really want a guy, or four out of five even in those battles that they really want a guy. And then you're looking at, you know, some other programs that maybe you might not get four out of five against, but you want to win more than you lose. You know, you want to win more than you lose against Arkansas, against North Carolina, against NC State. You want to be able to beat those programs, even Louisville, um, particularly with the way they've been recruiting lately. This is a good recruiting win to get Shelton Lewis on board. Again, as another athletic corner who could potentially play safety, just like Bryce Pollock, another defensive back from Georgia who committed over the weekend. Same kind of offer sheet. Georgia Tech, Indiana, Kansas State, Kentucky, Michigan State, Ole Miss, Mississippi State, Carolina, Penn State, Vanderbilt, Wake Forest, West Virginia. Um, yeah, and I, the problem was on my sheet, Isaiah Neal, we'll get to him in a second. His offer sheet was so long, I had to write it onto a second line. I had to make sure that wasn't Bryce Pollock's sheet. But here again, same kind of thing. You want to beat Georgia Tech and Indiana, um and Vanderbilt and Wake Forest on a regular, you know, four out of five. You know, you want to be really consistently able to beat those schools for the kids you're after. Because those schools are kind of that middle tier, middle and sometimes even lower tier of power five. You want to be above that. You know, you want to be able to, you need to stay above that middle tier if you want to be able to keep competing in the ACC. And then you want to win more than you lose against Michigan State, against Ole Miss, against North Carolina, against Penn State, against West Virginia. And so that's what they were able to do here with Bryce Pollock. Again, a guy who had a couple more official visits scheduled and told us, I'm not taking them. I'm done. So that's three commitments, three defensive backs. And then they got three more guys over the weekend. And a couple of these guys, it, it's exciting for me to say that they committed because if you watched our live show two weeks ago, I think it was our final live show of May, before Memorial Day, I gave you five recruits to watch this month. And two of them were guys who committed this weekend. One was Kenny Johnson, wide receiver out of Dallas Town in York, Pennsylvania. And the reason we said Kenny Johnson was a guy to watch is because he's in York, Pennsylvania. And he's got an offer from Penn State, and he had an official visit scheduled to Penn State for the end of the month. Now, if you know your geography in Pennsylvania, you know that York, Pennsylvania is pretty firmly in Penn State territory. And if there's a kid there who has an opportunity to go to Penn State, a kid from Dallas Town High School has an opportunity to go to Penn State, they're probably going to go to Penn State. And so to get Kenny Johnson to commit this weekend was a, a, a huge pull. For Pat Narduzzi, for Frank Signetti, for Taekwon Underwood. And I'll tell you who had a really big impact here. I'll tell you who was maybe the uh, MVP of landing Kenny Johnson. It was Kenny Minchie, the quarterback commitment from Tennessee, who was here on his official visit as well. He committed uh, last month, and so he's been on board for a while. But here he had an opportunity to be around other recruits like Kenny Johnson and work on them and try and convince them to come to Pitt. And he was successful with Kenny Johnson. We'll see how he does with some of the other offensive players who didn't commit during this visit. Because out of the six commits, five of them are defensive guys. There were a handful of other offensive players who were here on visits. And they didn't commit. Um, we'll see how those efforts play off, or pay off as you kind of go down the road. But Kenny Johnson's one that they got. And I think it's one that they really wanted and one that they really liked. And I think Pitt feels like he's, I mean, we at Rivals, we have him ranked as the number two wide receiver in the state for the class of 2023 behind Rodney Gallagher, at Laurel Highlands, of course, who's committed to West Virginia. Um, but I think Pitt had Kenny Johnson really high on the list. I don't know if they had him higher than Gallagher. Probably there were different opinions. Some did, some didn't. Um, you know, d different members of the staff probably have different opinions. But I think Kenny Johnson is a really good receiver prospect. You put him together with Zion Fowler. The wide receiver from New Jersey who, is commit, who committed last fall and took his official visit this weekend. You got a pretty nice receiving core there uh, with Johnson and Fowler. And then a chance to add maybe one or two really high-end guys to top off this class. And then the other guy that I mentioned is, as a recruit to watch two weeks ago was Isaiah Neal. Defensive tackle out of Baltimore, San Francis. Uh, this guy... I mean, how he's not a four-star prospect right now, I think is a, a miscarriage of justice. 
Uh, he's currently a 5.73 star, which is the highest rivals rating you can have as a three star. But listen to his offer sheet. You got Boston College, Duke, Kansas, Louisville, Maryland, Michigan, Michigan State, Ole Miss, NC State, Northwestern, Ohio State, Rutgers, Syracuse, Virginia, Virginia Tech, West Virginia. Now that's a pretty good offer sheet. An offer sheet that I would say would put you pretty close to four-star territory, if not firmly in it. And then you put on the tape and you check out a defensive tackle who's a little bit smaller, but it's quicker and shiftier and can make plays. He's a playmaking defensive tackle. Pitt fans know the value of a playmaking defensive tackle. They've seen it in the past with Aaron Donald. They've seen it more recently with Jalen Twyman. They saw it last year with Kalaja Kansi, and they're going to see even more of it with Kalaja Kansi this coming season. That's the mold for Isaiah Neal. That's where he fits. That, that's what he's going to do when he gets to Pitt. And that's why Charlie Partridge likes him so much. That's why the rest of the Pitt staff is so excited to have him committed. He's a four-star prospect in my mind. We'll see if eventually his rating catches up to where he really projects um, and to what his talent level is. But I think that was another huge pickup. And then the final one, another defensive lineman, uh, Antonio um, Kamen. I'm saying Kamen. I need to check with him on how to pronounce his last name. C-A-M-O-N. He's a defensive end out of the Tampa area. 6'3", 250. I kind of wondered if Pitt would look at him more as an interior defensive lineman at that size, 6'3", 250 kind of fits more of like an Isaiah Neal mold, although Neal even weighs more than he does. Uh, But that's sort of that smaller defensive tackle size. But I think Pitt likes him at least now as a a defensive end, as, you know, rushing off the edge. And I think this is another one who, boy, he's, if he's not a four-star prospect, he's pretty close. You know, he's pretty close. Offer sheet, Boston College, Duke, Florida State, Iowa State, Kansas, Kentucky, Louisville, Maryland, Ole Miss, Nebraska, Penn State, Rutgers, South Carolina, Syracuse, Virginia Tech, West Virginia. I think I got that all in in one breath. Now, that's a four-star offer sheet. That's four-star film that you're going to see on Antonio Kamen. And I think he's one that we should have as a four-star. So you get six commitments, two defensive linemen, three defensive backs and then Kenny Johnson the wide receiver brings a class like I said up to eight commitments total they now have all those guys that I just mentioned three DBs two D linemen one end and one tackle two receivers and a quarterback and that's the class right now there's obviously more that's going to be filled in there I think they could get another guy or two out of this past weekend uh official visits and then they've got two more official visit weekends coming up not this weekend but the final two weekends in june so they're going to go june 16th to 18th which is a thursday to saturday official visit and then they go the 24th 26th more traditional friday to sunday official visit to close out the month so that's what the rest of the month is looking like huge official visit weekend for Pitt. they had 14 recruits on campus two were already committed six joined the group so you got eight out of 14 committed to Pitt. And out of those other six, I think they they did strong work with those guys. Made a really good impression. Um, and, and we're going to see over the next two weeks if some of those guys who didn't commit this weekend maybe end up losing their spots. We'll see. We'll see how that plays out. But great weekend for Pitt. Great weekend for Pat Narduzzi. Great weekend for the coaching staff. And a great weekend for some, some serious recruiting momentum for Pitt, which I think was building through the spring. And it's really taking off now. But it wasn't just in the south side. Number four right there. And another commitment. But this time for hoops. Jeff Capel landed Cassius McNeely. One of the more interesting stories. And I'm going to be honest. As we sit here doing this weekend recap. I don't have the full story on Cassius McNeely yet. Still trying to. Every time I think I've got most of the details ironed out. I think of another question and say. But what was going on then? What was happening there? What about this year? What about that year? What 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 was he doing in that academic calendar year? There's still a lot of questions. We know some basics though. He's originally from Canada. He's a four-star prospect in the class of 2019. Went to Texas A&M. Went to TCU. Went to a junior college. Committed to Maryland. And now is committed to Pitt. It's a lot of travels. It's a lot of stuff going on. It's a lot of movement for uh, Cassius McNeely over the course of his career. But now he's at Pitt. And it's an interesting guard addition because I, I don't think he's I don't think he's a point guard. I think he's more of a scoring guard. He's gonna play off the ball. And quite frankly, with the two spots that Pitt had left, you know, after they added 
you know, all the transfers and the, you know, the, the Diaz Graham twins and all this stuff. They had two spots left. And I really thought that with those two spots, if they were going to take another guard, they would probably try to get someone who, um, would be a back, a, a point guard, someone who could be a backup point guard for Nelly Cummings. Now, that's not easy to get. It's not easy to go find a transfer who wants to come in and be a backup. It's a, it's a, it's a hard recruiting sell to say, hey, why don't you come here and be a backup? Because every guy wants to believe they're going to play 30 minutes a game. Every guy wants to believe they're going to be the number one guy. But I thought if Pitt got another guard, it would be another kind of true point guard, which I think is what Nelly Cummings is. Jamarius Burton really isn't. Nike Sabandi really isn't. Um, Greg Elliott really isn't. And that's kind of the guards on the team. And so you bring in Cassius McNeely, and, and I think he's he can help. He's a scorer. You know what I mean? That, that's sort of what he does. Um, but I don't know if he was necessarily what they need. Now, it's not a bad thing. You added backcourt depth. Now you've got Cummings, Burton, Sabandi, McNeely, and Elliott. You've got five guards you can put out there in different combinations. They got one spot left. They're still working on, you know, Seiku Jawara, um, the Spanish transfer, who... They're trying to land, uh, you know, seemingly still trying to land. He'd be more of a point guard. He'd be more of a on, you know, on the ball guard, or you know, a guard with the ball in his hands, and less than a, less of a scorer than McNeely. But even then, like, you know, someone like Jawar, are they going to look at the situation and say, "All right, well, I mean, you guys are cool. I like you. I, I really like Pitt. I really like Pittsburgh. I, I would really like to be a Panther, but where are my minutes coming from?" You got five guards for two spots, you know, and throwing Nate Santos. You've got six guys for three spots. Where are my minutes going to come from? Even if I'm really your only other ball handling guard, you know, somebody that you're going to trust to be the point guard, I don't know if I want to come in and be the backup. So it was an interesting pickup to get McNeely, a little bit of a lottery ticket, I think, uh, but one with upside and, and, and probably a lottery ticket worth trying on. I just don't know, like, if that ended up canceling out your chances to get another point guard, was it worth the lottery ticket, I guess? And for the final spot, you know, sure, you'd like to get another backup point guard, but I think they need another forward, too. I mean, they're going into the season with Blake Hinson as the top power forward. John Hughley, obviously, is the center. And then behind them, you've got the Diaz-Graham twins, Jorge and Guillermo. Will Jeffers could play four, uh, play the four, I guess. Um, you know, probably more than you would want him to play the three. And then Feta Federico is your backup center. I think you'd like another big to put out there. Ideally a four who could give you some minutes in case the Twins aren't ready. And I, I think the Twins might be more ready than we expect them to be. But ideally you'd have another power forward you could put out there. You know, for reserve minutes to play with. You know, split minutes with Blake Henson. Move around and, and just, you know, <laughs> you're going to need some more bodies at the forward spots. You're going to need some more bodies in the front court. So, uh, you know, it's just a question of whether they can find a good one to take that last spot. So it's going to be really interesting to see what Jeff Cable does with that 13th scholarship. I, I think he'll, I think he'll use it. Um, I don't expect them to go in the, into this season with empty scholarships like they have seemingly every year Cable's been here. I don't know if it's exactly every year, but it seems like it. Um, but it's just going to be really interesting to see how. They fill that last spot. All right, then the last item from the weekend, the first prospect camp. On Sunday, Pat Narduzzi had, uh, and his staff held their first prospect camp in the south side. And I've been doing this job for 17 years. I've been attending these prospect camps for 17 years. And this was the largest prospect camp I've ever seen. There were more than 500 players working out at Pitt on Sunday. 500 how you can even hope to get much of an evaluation, I mean, it's almost a fool's quest. It really is. It's almost impossible to get a real evaluation on guys. What they end up doing is splitting them up into smaller groups. Obviously, split them into positions. They split, them, split even within the positions into smaller groups to try and really get eyes on somebody. Out of 518 or 520, however many kids there were, 490 are not FBS level, probably. You know... 
maybe that's that might be an exaggeration, but I, less than 20, I think, are realistically under consideration for Pitt. The group that was there on Sunday was mostly underclassmen, 2024 and 2025 recruits. So the 25 kids, the 2025 kids just finished their freshman year. They're going into their sophomore year of high school. 2024 kids just finished their sophomore year. They're going into their junior year of high school. And that was largely the focus. There were a lot of seniors. There were a lot of 2023 kids going into their senior year of high school. Um, But largely the focus was on those younger kids. And so it was a good opportunity for Pitt to see some of them. It was a good opportunity for those kids to get college coaching. I don't know how many future Panthers there were out there. But I'll say this, and and, and I felt like this was sort of the consensus in talking to a lot of people, either talking to pit people, talking to people who came to the camp, parents, there's always parents milling around up for conversation. When you win an ACC championship, you have a Heisman Trophy finalist and a Bletnikoff Award winner, it raises your exposure. You become more prominent, you become more relevant, and kids want to come to your camp. And I'm not saying they had 530 or however many it was, or 500 Let's just call it 500 because 500 is a ridiculous number anyway. I'm not saying that they had 500 kids at their camp because they won the ACC, but I don't think it hurt. I think it raised the prominence of the program. I think it raised um, the awareness of the program, and I think it drew kids in. I think it, 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 it got some attention for Pitt, and it paid off with all these kids wanting to come to their camp and work with the coaches of the team that just produced a Heisman Trophy finalist and a Bletnikoff Award winner and the ACC champions. So, to the victory go the spoils, right? And we'll see what the next few prospect camps look like. They've got a few more scheduled. Some are going to be a little more heavy on the seniors, the 2023 kids. Some will be, you know, emphasizing again some of these younger guys. Hopefully, some of the camps are a little smaller than this one because 500 was a bit much to manage for me and Alex Christo and Matt Hawley, uh, who all came down to the south side with me uh, on Sunday. So, it was interesting, though. We definitely saw some interesting guys. We're going to be writing about them on PantherLair.com for sure. In addition to continuing our uh, you know wrap-up coverage of the official visit weekend, Monday we've got you know a really interesting interview, I think, coming with Kenny Minchie, quarterback commitment, so keep an eye out for that. And, of course, look for all of our content at Panther-Lair.com, Pittsburgh.Rivals.com. And like I said, like this video, share this video. Um, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Help us out. Help us spread the word so we can keep, you know, make it worthwhile to do these things so we can keep doing them. We get the weekly recap every Monday morning. We get the live show every Wednesday night at 8.30 where you can have your comments and questions, uh, you know, read on the air as it is um, in the 21st century parlance. And um, we can have that conversation, that back and forth. And then, uh, like I say, every Friday we've got the conversation conversation podcast where we interview someone interesting to pit players coaches former players former coach who knows whoever we think is interesting recruits we'll get them on video we'll have a conversation and we'll put it out there for you you don't want to miss any of that stuff so subscribe youtube.com slash panther com it's been a heck of a weekend (laughs) it really has uh it was a good one for pit not really too many negatives that you're going to find out there so We had some stuff to talk about today. I appreciate you tuning in. Appreciate you checking it out. Appreciate you liking the video. Appreciate you subscribing to the YouTube channel. Have a great week. We will talk to you Wednesday night for the uh, live Panther Panther Lair show. That's at 830 right here on YouTube.com slash PantherLairCom. So have a great week. We'll talk to you in a couple days.